Welcome back everybody to another Motobob video. Now we're just back from EICMA and man was it a good year. There were loads of great new bikes that we featured on the channel. But naturally being such a big show there are a few that we missed. And so in this video I'll give you a comprehensive list of our favourite picks from each of the major manufacturers and we'll go in alphabetical order scoring the stands along the way. Now first up we've got Aprilia and they certainly had some nice stuff on the stand to look at. There are a couple of race prepped Touareg 660 adventure bikes that really did catch my eye. Also some of their MotoGP bikes too, but I think the real big attraction was their new middleweight sports bike. This is the RS457, and it's basically a smaller capacity alternative to their already pretty successful RS660 twin. This one looks pretty sweet to me though. It's about 47 horsepower, 158 kilograms dry, and it's got a nice looking chassis spec, a bunch of rider modes, and a TFT display. So definitely one to look forward to, but as for the show itself, I I think I'll have to give them a B because we already knew about this one. It was announced back in September. Now, Benelli's stand is always super impressive at EICMA. It's clean and simple, but they just line up loads of bikes for people to sit on, and it really works, in my opinion. And this year, they had a whole host of new bikes. There was absolutely loads to get through. So the parallel twin-powered Tornado sports bikes, and they come in a 300, a 400, and a 500. Then there was a naked version of that 500, a brand new 30-horsepower single cylinder, in the form of the BRX 300S. And also, I got to have a look at the TRK 702X, which they had previously announced, but it was my first time seeing it and I thought it looked really impressive. So look, lots to see. The only thing I will say is that being owned by QJ Motor, most of these bikes are only really new to Benelli because QJ have already released most of them under their own branding. But look, even with that significant caveat, I think just for the sheer volume of new bikes, it's got to be an A+. Now you know the drill with Bermota since Kawasaki recently bought a big stake in them. They take an existing Kawasaki bike, apply some cool Italian styling and also some crazy looking front suspension and voila, you've got a new Bermota. And that's pretty much what we've got here with the new Terra that was announced at the show that makes almost 200 horsepower and that's because it's built upon the supercharged Ninja H2SX. Now the benefit of this Tessie front end is that it separates braking, turning and suspension suspension forces for what they say is better handling and ride quality. But the thing is, the previous system was a little bit limited in terms of how far it could turn, so it was 27 degrees, and that meant it was only really good for sports bikes. This new one though, it turns through 35 degrees, and that's much more practical and much more at home on a bike of this nature. So look, a very interesting new bike, and I'll have to go for an A for Bermota. Now look, despite having plenty of new bikes to show off, BMW didn't have a stand at Eichmann this year, and so it's an instant F. They will, however, be at Motorcycle Live in less than a week, so do head to the link in the description if you fancy picking up a ticket. I'll be there on some of the weekdays, so do say hello if we cross paths. On to CF Moto, though, and they had a banging year with all sorts of new bikes to show off. Primarily, the 450 MT caught my eye. It's a great-looking mid-to-small capacity adventure bike with loads of genuine off-road friendly features like a 21-inch front wheel, decent ground clearance, and also folding foot controls. Then, and on top of that, we have the epic looking MTX concept, a new 100 horsepower 675 triple cylinder engine to be used in future bikes, the 800 NK GP track ready naked bike, the 125 NK concept, which looks really cool for a 125, and a couple of customs with the CLC low ride cruiser and the CLX Spirit Scrambler. So I think you'd have to agree a great selection of a new engines, some customs, some concepts, and some production models. And so you've got to say, that it has to be an A plus for CF Moto for ticking pretty much every box when it comes to motorcycle shows. Now, Ducati run their world premieres every year building up to EICMA, and so we've had a bunch of bikes announced in the months prior, like the Multistrada V4 Grand Tour and the Multistrada V4 RS, the anniversary edition of the Monster, and the all new Hypermotar 698. Now, this bike in particular was voted by punters at EICMA as the most beautiful bike of the show, and 
and also under the hood it packs a punchy new single cylinder engine that makes around 70 or 80 horsepower so it has to be one of the most anticipated new bikes of the new model year. Then on top of that we had the new special edition of the Panigale V4 SP2 which celebrates 30 years since the introduction of their iconic 916, done so with a special paint job and they specifically launched this one on the first day of Eichma and so it's going to be an A for Ducati here for the new bike for the show and also I've got to say that the Unica version of their Street Fighter V4 definitely caught my eye, that looks fantastic and that's basically their bespoke service that allows you to spec a bike at the factory exactly how you want. Sadly, probably out of most people's price range to have that experience but still great looking bike. The weird thing about Harley Davidson is that last year at Motorcycle Live they went all out on the stand. It was massive and it looked fantastic but they weren't at Eichma this year and they won't be at Motorcycle Live and so that's an F all round. Definitely bringing their A game though, we had Honda with I think about eight new bikes. Now the big one was the CB1000 Hornet with a new styling job for their largest capacity naked. And then we also had tweaks to the Fireblade SP, the CBR600RR which is coming back to Europe, an update to their 500 lineup and some new 650s complete with the option of their new e-clutch system which allows you to ride off and come to a stop and change gear without having to touch the clutch lever. Then you've got the new Africa Twins that they already announced a month or two back. There were some customs on their stand as well and some of their race bikes. So clearly a massive A plus for Honda and we'll cover some of the bikes we missed at Motorcycle Live next week. Now before we get on to the next one, I just want to say a massive thanks to our sponsors for Eichma. That's Metzler Tires and Insta360. Now with Insta360, for every bike review that we shoot back here, we use their X3 360 camera and it's absolutely a game changer. The thing that I love about them so much is that you can just stick them pretty much anywhere on the bike and you can use one of their many motorcycle mounts to do so and you don't have to worry about framing it right or getting it level because once the ride is over you simply pull the footage into their app and it's in there that you can move it around and take landscape or portrait shots and basically get any framing that you want so it's a really creative tool but also makes shooting and sharing your ride super fun and stress free. We absolutely love using them so do check check out the link down in the description to pick one up. And also, you'll find down there a code which will give you a free gift with every X3 purchase. So once again, a massive thanks to Insta360 for their support. And with that, we're back to the list with Husqvarna. Now they were there, to be fair to them, but they didn't really have anything new. The Norden 901 got a very minor update for this year with a bit of new paint as well. But that's pretty much it, and so I think it's going to have to be a C, I'm afraid. Thing is, what about the spied update to the Svartpilen and Vitpilen? and lineups. Well, I was hoping it would be announced at Eichma, but unfortunately, the wait continues. Now, no Indian stand this year, I'm afraid. They did announce a new limited edition of the FTR Carbon in collaboration with 100%, and it does look pretty cool. In fact, I think it's the best finish ever for the FTR, but ultimately it was shown on the 100% stand, so I think that's got to be an F2. Now, as for KTM, well, they did have a stand and they did launch a new bike with the 990 Duke, and to me, it looks pretty decent. There's a touch more power, there's a rework into the chassis, and also a completely different visual design to the front end and headlight. The only downside is that it has taken a fairly significant hike up in price, so it now comes in at £12,995 in the UK, which I think is about 1500 quidish more than what an 890 Duke car would have cost you. Worth it? It, well, we'll have to wait and see when we get to ride one. But in the meantime, we'll have to give them an A for launching a new bike at Eichma. No word yet on the Spy 1390s. And so again, much like the Huskies, it looks like we'll have to wait a little longer for those. Now, Kawasaki straight off the bat get an A plus for launching multiple new bikes, including a boost for their middleweights. So the Z400 and Ninja 400 have been bumped up to the Z500 and Ninja 500. Then they had a new Z naked version of their Ninja Hybrid, and it was also, I believe, the first public viewing of their new Eliminator 500. Then you had the 40th anniversary paint on their sports bikes, which I really do like a lot, and also some new colours for the Ninja 650 and the Ninja 1000 SX. So yes, that's an A+, just for the number of bikes, even if none of them are particularly groundbreaking. Now over to Moto Guzzi, and I think one of the bikes of the show has to be their new V100 Stelvio adventure bike, and it's basically a 
jacked up version of the V100 Mandelo that was launched last year, and I think it looks very, very nice. I'd already seen the spy shots, but thing is with the proper paint on it, it's a fantastic looking thing, and if the Mandelo is anything to go by, it should be pretty decent to ride too. Plus, on top of that, they updated the more old school adventurer, the V85 TT, with some new paint, a new TFT dash, a cast wheeled Strada version, and also now an inertial measurement unit for lean sensitive rider aids on some of the other versions. This one looks very nice to me, and so combined with the Stelvio, that's got to be another A+. One of the other very impressive stands, and also super busy with Italian punters for the whole week, was Moto Marini, who also had a very impressive lineup for the show. There was an update to their Milano, which is a super cool looking retro roadster, and then the same 1200 V Twin was also put into their new X Cape 1200 adventure bike. Then they also launched two new Corsaro 750s, so the naked bike and the sports version, and then lastly their 650 Calibro, which we did already know about, but it was its first showing in public. So of course, a plus. Now Envy Augusta were back again this year after sitting out in 2022, and with it they brought their new adventure bike, the LXP Orioli. This is basically the production version of their 9.5 Lucky Explorer concept, and it looks impressive with a top spec chassis and a 120 horsepower triple. The only sticking point, as per usual with an MV, is the astronomical price, which is expected to be around 30,000 euros, and also it's a limited run of 500, so good luck getting hold of one if you do like the look of it, but still, we'll give them an A for the new bike specifically announced at the show. Enfield brought their new 450 Himalayan, and I've got to say it looks like a good step up from what was previously a very basic bike. We're talking more power, more tech, a completely new chassis, and so it all looks much more competitive now with the other mid to small adventure bikes currently on the market. Plus, they had some new colours for the 350 meters, and also a peek at their Him E electric Himalayan test bike, which I think looks pretty exciting, and so with all that in mind, they get an A. Now, Suzuki came with their new GSX ATAR, which is a sports bike version of the GSX A-Test that they announced last year, and whilst it won't be like a Revy Screamer, that parallel twin is really about grunt and torque, it does still look like it'll be a decent bike, and I've got to say I was really impressed with the naked version, so I'm feeling good about this one. On top of that, they also had a new sports tourer called the GSX S1000GX, and that's basically a taller version of their GSX S1000 GT, but also with electronically adjustable semi-active suspension, and that's a first for Suzuki. Also, I've got to say they sorted out the front end looks a bit. I think the stacked headlight looks a lot better than the goggly eyes on the GT version, and so an A plus for multiple new bikes. Now Triumph put on a decent stand, but there was nothing specifically new for the show. There was the new Tiger 900, which does look nice, that was announced a few weeks back, the new Scrambler 1200s, and also the Speed 400 and Scrambler 400X, both of which I'm really looking forward to riding, but look, I'll have to go B because there's nothing specifically new for Eichma. Although that being said, I'm still expecting more from them before the 2024 riding season, because we've seen out testing a 660 sports bike and it looks pretty close to being done. Then we've got Yamaha. I really thought they might actually finally release the rumoured R9, but sadly, it didn't happen. There was, however, the XSR 900 GP, which is like a third version of their XSR 900 Retro, and I really like that, and I think you guys did too. Then they had on the stand their new MT-09 and MT-09 SP. That was announced a few weeks back. And then as for new announcements, well, there was a scooter, I believe, but also an Explore version of the Tenere 700. Thing is, though, it's basically an accessory pack on the standard bike. It does get slightly lower suspension, but it's not exactly an all-new model. And so I think, on balance, I'll have to go for a B here. So there we go with the roundup of the best bikes of this year's show. It was an absolute blast to go and film, so thanks to everyone who watched the videos and commented on them and interacted with us. It really made it a lot of fun. Do let me know down in the comments what you think of my scores for the stands and also which your favourite bike was. You can see all of the videos we made last week in a playlist here, so if you missed any, do check them out. And of course, hit subscribe if you've not already to see more of the latest motorcycle news right here on YouTube. There are plenty of bikes to be announced, I'm sure, ahead of 2024. We still get some through December, January, February, so keep an eye peeled for those. Many thanks for watching today, and we'll see you in the next video.